the average person can survive about three days without water. What is your plan to have enough water on hand for you and your family during an extended water outage? Just imagine if you woke up in the morning and you flipped the lights on, but they didn't come on. You went over to the sink to make your morning coffee, you turned on the faucet, and no water came out. You got on the phone to call the water company, but the phones are down. Your neighbor is in the exact same situation. What do you do? You've got three days to figure it out before you start having serious problems. So in this video, we're gonna talk about three ways that we can solve this problem. We're gonna go from good, better, to best. And by the way, if you're new here, we are building an off-grid homestead from scratch here in North Idaho. We make all kinds of videos about the process going from clearing the land to building our house, the greenhouse, the off-grid stuff there you can see in the background, and all kinds of preparedness stuff as well. So if that's the kind of thing that you're into, well, you might want to subscribe. So here is the, is the good solution. Ready.gov recommends that you have one gallon of water per person per day stored. However, they also say that children, nursing mothers, the sick uh, might need more water. There's also medical emergencies and you might need more water for that. They also say, you know, if you live in a warm climate and it gets hot, you're gonna need more water, maybe double the amount of water. So I think it would probably be wise to store at least two gallons of water per person per day. So that means if your water was off for a month and you were a family of four, you're gonna need about 240 gallons of stored water. Now remember, this is just for minimal use. If you've got animals or you've got a garden, maybe you wanna take a bath or something like that, you're gonna need more water than that as well. And what about helping your neighbors? If they're not prepared, are you prepared to help them out of your stored water? And so be sure to store up your water in a cool, dark place. And remember to check your floor joists to see if they can handle the load because 240 gallons of water weighs almost 2,000 pounds. And if you were to double that, right, that's nearly two tons of water that you're storing in your house or your apartment. You don't want that going through the floor. So storing up some water to get you through an extended water outage is a good option, but there's a better one. What if you could store just a few days of water and find a natural water source near your home that you could access in an emergency. Ideally, this would be a natural water source on your property, something like a swimming pool or a pond, a stream, maybe a lake if you are fortunate enough to have lakeside property. And if you're gonna rely on your swimming pool, remember that this is a limited source of water. It will eventually run out. So you might wanna prepare ahead by getting all of the parts and pieces that you need so that you can divert all of your rain gutters from your house over into your swimming pool and be able to capture as much rain as possible when it does rain. If you don't have a natural source of water on your property that you can access, you're also gonna to wanna to assess the risk of traveling outside of your property to go get that water. If there's a lengthy grid down situation, it may not be safe to travel very far. Now, of course, this is gonna depend on where you live, but if you live in a rural farming community, probably not a really big risk. But if you live in New York City and you wanna to travel to Central Park to get water out of a lake there, that might be a totally different situation and you might not wanna go out. Also, another thing that you're gonna to wanna to consider is how are you gonna transport that water back to your house if you have to go any distance at all? Water is pretty heavy. You could transport it in your car as long as you have gas, but you might be carrying it or pushing it in a wheelbarrow once the gas runs out. On top of that, any water that you get from an outside source, whether it's from your swimming pool or a crystal clear stream, you're gonna wanna treat it before you drink it. And there are four main ways that you could treat that water. One is by boiling it. You're gonna wanna boil it for at least one minute, and this will kill like all of the viruses and bacteria in there and make it safe to drink. But 
it won't remove any contaminants, right? Like if it's contaminated with gasoline or, or oil or some type of pesticide or herbicide, it's not gonna get that out of there. Another option would be to chlorinate the water using household bleach. That'll do the same thing as boiling it and has the same drawbacks as well. But you could filter it if you have a high quality water filter, it'll probably get out a lot of those contaminants, but you're definitely going to want to read the instructions to it and the manufacturer's information to make sure what types of chemicals it will filter out of it. The very best way and the safest way would be to distill that water. And if you would like us to do a, an in-depth video about how to treat water in an emergency situation, let me know down in the comments below and we can try to do that for you. Now this option is better because you might have an unlimited source of water to get you through even the longest grid down situations. Your limiting factor though would be your ability to treat it. You definitely do not want to drink untreated water and get sick or get your family sick. That would definitely be no good. And so that brings us to what I think is the very best option and that is to have your own well. A well can provide you an unlimited amount of clean, fresh drinking water 24 seven. You never have to worry about having enough water for yourself, for your family. You could even provide water to your neighbors. But there is a catch. Your well pump requires electricity. What are you gonna do when the grid goes down? How are you gonna get that water out of your well. You could install a backup generator. That would be a good idea until it won't start or you run out of gas or there's some other problem and then what? Well, you might be thinking, hmm, I could use one of those, those old timey pitcher pumps like they used on Little House on the Prairie. That would work, wouldn't it? Those are really cool pumps, but they only pump water out of the ground about 20 feet down. Most of the domestic wells are more than 20 feet down to the water. And so you need to ask yourself, well, how deep is my well and where is the static water level? Chances are it's a lot deeper than 20 feet. Let's go check out our well. This is our well, guys. It is 520 feet deep with a static water level of about 90 feet. And there is no way that an old timey pitcher pump is gonna work on this well. And that's why the very best option would be to have a well like this. This has a regular standard 240 volt pump down in it, but when the grid goes down, we have no power. We have a simple pump. Simple pump is a trusted manufacturer of like high quality hand pumps for your well. They're made right here in the USA in Minden, Nevada. And this is truly the best hand pump on the market. It's designed for long-term reliability and it doesn't require any electricity. All of the parts are perfectly safe for drinking water. They follow the Safe Water Drinking Act and this thing can pump water from all the way down to 325 feet. It's totally freeze proof and not only will it fill a bucket of water, you can use this to actually pressurize your well tank in your house. Let me show you how it works. We've got a whole video where we installed the simple pump. So if you want to see like how it actually works and how you get it down in your well, go ahead and watch that video. I'll link to it down in the description below. But right, you just kind of just start pumping with it and water starts coming out, but it's super easy to pump. You can pump it with two fingers. You can pump it with one finger and water just comes out of the ground from 325 feet down. So you can fill a five gallon bucket with this thing in about two and a half minutes. But like I said, not only can you fill a bucket with this, but you can also pressurize your house. In order to do that, you're gonna wanna make one of these. Now, Simple Pump does have a kit and I'm pretty sure I had one of those kits, but I think I lost it. So I went ahead and made another one. They're super easy to make. You just need a check valve, you need a pressure gauge, and you need a female garden hose fitting here. All right, so we're gonna take our potable water hose and we're gonna hook it up right here to the end. And we're gonna make sure it's working. We're getting all kinds of good water out of there. 
Now we just take this and we hook it up to our frost free hydrant. Had to go all the way around <laughs> the chicken fence here because I didn't want to get shocked trying to climb over it. Hey buddy, you watch yourself. So you take your other end of the hose here, right? And you just run it over and we'll open this up. No water's coming out. So we go ahead and we hook this guy up to it. And then when we pump this, it's gonna go through the hose and go backwards through this frost-free hydrant and go all the way into the house. Now, if you don't have a frost-free hydrant by your well, you could just run a garden hose all the way over to your house and hook it to any outside spigot. And then it'll backfeed into your house and pressurize your pressure tank. So right now, we're pumping right around five gallons every two and a half minutes into the house, pressurizing our pressure tank. And so let's take a look at this here. We turned off the well and we ran all of the water out of our pressure tank. And so right now you can see here how the pressure's, you know, it's going up a little bit, but we can just keep pumping and pumping away until we fill up that pressure tank. They say that you don't wanna pressurize it more than 50 pounds but 50 pounds is plenty to run everything in your house so if you've got some kids that'd be way better than you coming out here and pumping this yourself but you can and you've got water inside the house which is a way better way to do it than carrying buckets of water from here into the house so let's just see is there any water there should be water give me a check yeah check please i <laughs> <laughs> hoping it worked oh yeah that's awesome Sweet. It really works, guys. That is how our family is having a secure water source right here on our homestead. Water 24-7 with zero electricity ready for whatever emergency comes down the road. And like I said, we've got the install video right up here and the improvements video right down here. We wanna thank Simple Pump for sponsoring this video. Don't forget there's a link to them down in the description below. Hope you guys have a really great day and keep smiling.